here's, here's an important thing to understand about trademark. Um, a trademark protects the consumer, okay? So the, the main primary objective of a trademark is to protect the end consumer. So a trademark is often it's a word or a logo or a design that protects the source of a it protects the source identity of a good. So if you are a company or a person that sells, let's say clothing, let's say on Etsy or some other good on Amazon, you will probably want to file for trademark protection. So you can actually seek registration federally and you can seek registration at the state level. You can also file federally, assuming your mark is used in commerce. So that means that it somehow has to involve another state or country. And the way that most people demonstrate that is by having a product they sell on the web that's accessible to all, to everybody, and not just people in a certain state. So right now we're in California, but if I put make a Shopify account and put my product on, then someone in Arizona would be able to see it and purchase it. So you can file for a, a state or federal trademark. Um, and what that is, is it represents the protection that you have on that, on that brand. The, the, the key part of a trademark is to understand that it's derived on use, okay? So it's based on how and when you start using a mark to sell goods or services. So maybe you're selling goods that get put on the market or you're selling services like consulting, for example, that you offer. Now, the key thing to understand about a trademark is you have to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. So consumers make purchasing decisions based primarily on brand. And what they're purchasing when they buy a product is they're purchasing the confidence that that good or service is coming from a certain source. Brands are all around us and we're just infiltrated with brands all the time. And they, they turn out to be really essential to whenever we're making purchasing decisions. And that's why companies invest so much in trying to protect their brands because not only are they, are, are they protecting the, the word or logo and, and making it so that others can't use it, but they're also protecting their investment, right? Because companies are gonna, companies do invest so much in terms of resources to, so that consumers will associate good quality products and good quality services with that name. Uh, the trademark right is based on use and it's based on use in commerce. And so that means that you're using your mark to sell a good or service. Now, the key thing to remember is that it's actually based on who uses it first generally. So senior users will have priority over those who use it later. Um, if you use your mark before you have a federally registered or state registered trademark, most people will use the TM symbol. And after registration, once they're granted the certificate, they're granted, they can, they then switch to using the R symbol. And that the R symbol means that they're a federally, federally registered trademark and they have a serial number and they're in the federal register. What I, what I haven't talked about is enforcement. And so what happens is that once you are able to secure the actual right, then you have remedies. So then you can actually stop other parties from selling similar goods and services with that same brand. Now, I just introduced the word um, similar goods and services. Now, the key thing to remember is that when you, especially when you file a, tra a federal trademark registration, there are a few things that you wanna keep in mind. Basically what you need in order to register for a federal, federal trademark is obviously you need to have the actual word mark or design. And then you also need to have a few key, key dates. So you have to have the first date that you use the mark anywhere. So this could be the first time you created a banner, the first day you put your web, your website went live, uh, the first time you created a flyer, um, and, and then you also need to have the date that you first use the mark in commerce. Now, use in commerce is important and it's an important consideration because it's important to get it right if you want to have your trademark to be, be federally recognized. Now, it's important to understand that it has to invoke interstate commerce. The way that most people show interstate commerce is by showing out-of-state sales. So this could be a, a sale to an out-of-state resident, for example. And proof of that receipt would, would be sufficient in most cases to establish that, you, that you're engaged in interstate commerce. And then this is the important thing. Um, you need to know what the goods and services are. So there's what's called the trademark identification manual. It's 
basically a manual that shows the various class numbers associated with goods or services. When you're actually pursuing a trademark application, it's also important to do some searching. So you are going to want to go to the trademark database and you're going to want to do some preliminary searching. Effectively, you want to make sure that there aren't other brands that might be that might be confusingly similar. The reason why it's important that you be sure that your mark wouldn't be confused with another mark is because if you file an application and the examiner finds a mark that's similar, they will enter a refusal. And those refusals can be, depending on how close the other mark is, very difficult to overcome. And so that might preclude you from being able to register a federal trademark. If you had two marks that were confusingly similar, then the end consumer would be confused. And the whole point is source identification. So there shouldn't be any confusion to the end consumer. Whenever they purchase a good or service with under a certain brand name, there shouldn't be confusion as to who is putting that good or service on the market. So those are the, some various parts of, of trademark applications and how and, and what you need before filing. Um, I, I will say that there's also a specimen requirement if you're filing under what's called an actual use application under Section 1, 1A. And if you don't have a specimen, so if you're not yet using your mark in commerce, you can file under Section 1B. And that, uh, those, that's also referred to as an intent to use application. Again, a trademark is a right that protects a brand and it protects the, the identity, identity of a mark, the source, the source identity of a mark.